Good Friday afternoon, everyone. This is Gary Ryan here with you for your This Week Daily for Friday, February 10th. Friday means hockey. Um, actually, there was hockey last night. Uh, if you missed it, uh, Danbury took on Watertown. Danbury came out on top, 4-2. to two. Um. So that gives them 77 points. Um, strange stat of the day, that officially clinches a playoff spot for Danbury. Um, actually, going into last night, they only needed one point to officially clinch. And they got a regulation win. So, um, yeah, they're guaranteed a playoff spot. Of course, you know, we factor in. It's Delaware. But anyway, uh, with last night... Um, Owen Liskovitz was the backup, did not play uh, for Watertown. And uh, Daniel Amesbury, dressed and played, zeros across the board, no penalty minutes, which says to me that he is saving his shenanigans for next Friday when the hat tricks come to the arena. Um, now, there was a, an incident Last night, uh, Tobias Ogic, who just came back to the team, uh, was suspended for a slew foot. So he received the game mis- misconduct, and he is suspended for tonight. Uh, so there is your Danbury note of the day. Uh, switching gears to the Black Bears. Uh, if you missed the Spotify This Week with Black Bears midweek edition, I uh, talked about Matthew Sproul. That's our new signee. Beer leaguer, literally. Uh, last uh, recorded um, activity by Matthew Sproul was from 2015 as he played in the IAHL, which is a men's recreational league in Edmonton. So... I'm a little confused about that, but uh, it is what it is. I'm certain he's probably only going to be with the club this weekend, and we'll see what happens from there. Anyway, uh, Black Bears did practice this morning at McMoran Place. Uh, they arrived yesterday, and uh, now, oh, we mentioned Danbury clinching a playoff spot. If Binghamton gets a regulation win tonight, they also clinch playoff spot. So, um, having Danbury in the same division uh, benefits us as far as playoffs. Uh, as far as Port Huron goes, uh, there will be no Larry Vartainen in the lineup tonight. Uh, he is he returned home on a personal matter. He has not been let go by the team. Uh, he remains on the active roster. Uh, it's unknown how long he'll be out, but um, he's not injured or anything like that. He's not cut. He's just attending to some personal matters. Uh, but being that he is the Prowler's number three scorer, that's a big loss. Uh, to try and make up for that, Port Huron signed Dylan Thackeray. And they also let go of Sam Williams. Okay, uh, so that covers everything for tonight. Uh, 7.30, uh, sorry, not 7.30, 7.05 is puck drop tonight. Um, you can either listen to Brooks Hill with the call on 1430 Fox Sports Radio. Uh, go to the iHeart app uh, and uh, you just uh, type in 1430 Fox Sports and it'll link you to that broadcast, or you can watch uh, the Port Huron's uh, YouTube coverage, which is pretty good. All right, uh, switching gears. Uh, I didn't say anything yesterday, but uh, it is official. In the SPHL, the Vermilion County Bobcats have ceased operations. Uh, the team announced everything ahead of the SPHL announcing it. So where we go from here is down the 10 teams in the SPHL. The, the remainder of the games that involve Vermilion County are being rescheduled so that 
the remaining teams can each have their 28 home games. So um, they'll get that all figured out and squared away. Uh, there will be a dispersal draft. The league announced, uh, not sure when, uh, chances are it will be on Tuesday. What that means is that the other teams can uh, go through what's left of the Bobcats roster and make a selection, take on a player, uh, and put it on their roster if they so wish. However, um, that will mean, uh, if they do that, that they probably have to let somebody else go. So this could have a domino effect uh, on FPHL rosters. Um, I'm not saying this is going to happen, but I'm just using this as an example. Um, Macon's going to be the first one to choose. Uh, if they decide, you know what, we want Mark Compain, the defenseman, uh, that, that's been with the Bobcats. Okay. Well, that's fine. Now you've got to cut somebody else. Somebody else could be Jesse Anderson, who, even though he's played pretty well for Macon, Macon may decide, well, we'd rather have Compain in the lineup than Jesse Anderson. I'm not saying <laughs> Macon's going to cut Jesse Anderson. I, I, I'm just using that as a hypothetical. But uh, that's where we're at with that. So um, uh, life goes on. Uh, and other news, uh, I mentioned yesterday on the Spotify podcast that uh, the FPHL offices made a little bit of a boo-boo on the transactions page. They listed uh, Chris Corgan, who had been let go by Delaware, signed by, or, well, they, they said, claimed on waivers by Watertown. The next lineup was signed by Carolina. And that was a mistake. They rectified it, and now it reflects uh, claimed on waivers by Watertown, signed by Watertown. So Corgan is a good um, addition to the gritty Wolves lineup. Uh, he's not going to give you a whole lot of points, but he uh, he's a lot like Josh Newberg. Uh, he He's very well on the faceoff dot. He's uh, good on the four check. Um, he provides a lot of energy. So uh, I think he's a good pickup for Watertown. Uh, the other interesting uh, action today on transactions was Mississippi, the Sea Wolves, added a player. They signed former Black Bear Sam Turner, who uh, played, I believe it was 15 games with us last year. And so now he is going to add his talents to the Seawolves roster. So uh, a lot of jockeying going on with roster positions. Um, I'm sure Sunday and Monday are going to be kind of insane. Um, yeah, add a player, subtract a player, uh, make sure everybody's at the, uh, the, the limit, uh, which you know, that deadline, again, is Monday. So everybody's got to be down to 22. I erroneously said 23 on um, on Wednesday. It's 22 total. That's, uh, yeah, everybody, including goaltenders. So um, I know Dan Barry still has a choice or two to make as far as uh, who they're going to release. So we will see. Um, I wish it was Amesbury. You know it's not going to be. Um Bill McCreary is not that kind of guy. He wants his rough and tumble guy. So uh, somebody else is going to lose a roster spot so that Amesbury can wreak havoc on the rest of the league. All right. I'm going to get off my soapbox now. And that does it for tonight. Again, remember, 7.05 is game time. Um, and uh, hopefully we'll get a win out of it, get ourselves a playoff spot secured on February 10th. Kind of funny, but it is what it is. All right. Thank you so much for tuning in. I will have a brief video uh, probably later tomorrow morning uh, as we sum up uh, the game uh, and the, uh, the other games that took place around the league. We'll kind of touch on uh, the updated standings and how things are looking around the Fed. All right, thank you so much for watching. Make sure 
that you hit like. I really appreciate it. It helps the algorithms out. Um, hit subscribe. Uh, click on the notification bell so every time that I upload a video, you can be the first to know. All right. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful weekend. We will catch up with you tomorrow. This has been the This Week Daily with me, Gary Ryan.